to thank the organizers for the invitation. Um, oh, I'll talk about uh, the unitary group of uh, sister algebra. So I will start by reminding you what the sister algebra is. So <coughs> H is a complex Hilbert space. Or will denote by B of H bounded linear operators acting in H and uh, a sister algebra Well, this is not a definition, uh, but we can describe them as uh, subalgebras. Subalgebra. Of B of H, B of H which is uh, closed. with the usual norm of operators. The norm of an operator is the supremum of its values in the ball. And uh, close in norm and also close by the take it I journeys. The adjoint of an operator, as, uh, as usual, defined by this duality. Um, in fact, uh, uh, sister algebras uh, do not need Hilbert spaces to be defined. And there is an in intrinsic definition which doesn't make use of any Hilbert space. They turn out to be subalgebra of, of, of operators, but uh, uh, you must keep in mind that there is no special or intrinsic Hilbert space uh, here. Uh, you may represent it in many different spaces according to your needs. Um, also, I, as I will mention uh, a special type of uh, sister algebras, which are uh, von Neumann algebras. Uh, I is a von Neumann algebra if it is closed. with a weaker topology, namely uh, close with the topology given by the semi-norms such semi-normal scheme for pairs of vectors in H. Um, okay. There are, there's a, a wide uh, family of uh, examples and classes of sister algebras, but here we'll also be considering uh, simple sister algebras. I, I, no, I mean easy. The whole B of H or certain or the compact operators which I will describe later. Um, well, <coughs> the unitary group of A uh, 
uh, is the set of unitary operators of H which belong to A. So this is invertible, which whose inverse is the uh, adjoint. These are isometries. And uh, oh, what we study, oh, I forgot to mention that uh, there are several people involved in this, uh, in these matters, which first uh, Lazaro Recht, who talked us about this, and then there are other people which I will mention here with uh, Alberto Mendoza from Venezuela. Luis Mata, also from Venezuela, and uh, a colleague, uh, Alejandro Varela, from Buenos Aires. Um, <coughs> so, uh, we'll consider um, homogeneous spaces. of A, of U of A, the unitary group, uh, with certain restrictions, namely, uh, suppose uh, we suppose that this is the homogeneous space. The group will be supposed to act uh, transitively. And uh, the, the subgroups of, fi of uh, unitaries which fix an element, uh, let's call this sets of for any rho sub, rho sub zero in the homogeneous space, we'll suppose that the unitaries that fix this any or any element. This, by this we denote the action. This, uh, we'll suppose that this subgroup is the, the unitary group of uh, subalgebra. Where this is a subalgebra. C star subalgebra. It's uh, clearly closed, but uh, it's also closed under the involution of the, of the taken out joints. And uh, so <coughs> oh, we are looking at quotients of this type. And uh, I mean, uh, tangent spaces are <coughs> naturally isomorphic to this, uh, uh, to the tangent space of this quotient. So, tangent spaces at any point uh, are in correspondence with uh, the Lie algebra, the quotient of the Lie algebras of these groups. Now, <coughs> uh, the Lie algebra. of uh, the unitaries, as, as it happens with matrices, consists of uh, operators which are anti-self-adjoint. I mean, uh, uh, op uh, elements such that the adjoints are uh, minus x. So, <coughs> or uh, if one multiplies by the complex constant i, one can uh, consider that the Lie algebra is just uh, the self-adjoint uh, elements of A. So we'll adopt this uh, this point of view. Let's just say that we'll assume that the Lie algebra is the self-adjoint elements of 
of A. So <coughs> that uh, the Lie algebra of the subgroup is, is the self-adjoint elements of the subalgebra, and the tangent spaces are in correspondence with the quotient Now, uh, we'll consider, so it is natural to consider the quotient norm here. Yes. Yes. You get uh, A uh, oh, um, s uh, symmetric matrices and B uh, a subalgebra of matrices. Grassmannians or flag manifolds, for instance. Mm -hmm. I, I will um, talk about some uh, examples. So <coughs> um, we'll use here the quotient. This is a quotient of uh, real Banach spaces, so we'll use here the quotient norm. And this will endow uh, the homogeneous space P with a an invariant, a group invariant, uh, left invariant uh, metric. So, uh, so um, one problem with the operator norm in in, uh, in any sister algebra is that, in general, it is uh, non-smooth. I mean, if uh, you take the norm of a, of a smooth field, that will that won't be a, s a smooth map. So, just a continuous map. So, these are uh, non-smooth metrics. Then, <coughs> um, well, <coughs> in my talk, I will, uh, in fact, uh, Lazaro Rex will try to convince you that uh, this is uh, the right norm to take, and that the important problem here is to, th this norm, this quotient norm, let me describe it, is, uh, is an infimum. Is, uh, if you have a x, let's say c in SA, the quotient norm will be the infimum of or the distance uh, from this uh, self-adjoint element to the <coughs> to the self-adjoint elements of a subalgebra so the first uh, the main problem here is to detect or know where this infimum is uh, realized is, uh, is in fact a minimum. Also, if there exists, we shall <coughs> when uh, we shall be interested or this <coughs> we shall call a um, uh, self-adjoint uh, element uh, minimal element if uh, if it realizes this infimum Equivalent, equivalently or if uh, this will be called minimal elements and uh, I, I I mean the, the main question here is if in every class, in every element in the quotient, there exists a minimal representative. Or <coughs> equivalently, if uh, the distance between any class and the subalgebra can be achieved at, a, at, a, at an element. Um, due to the fact that this uh, norm is not uh, well behaved, I mean, it, it is not smooth, it is not uh, uh, convex, so we, don't, we, we do not expect that uh, 
minimal elements are unique. In general, uh, minimal elements, if they exist, uh, are in general are non-unique. Um, we have a result uh, characterizing minimal elements which uh, will be useful no. which will be useful later to see the key role that these uh, minimal elements uh, play. And this is the following result. Theta um, zero in is minimal in its class. Uh, if and only if. Uh, one has the if and only if there exists a representation phi of a on a Hilbert space. If you prefer, we we can directly regard if we can regard a as a subalgebra of of this uh, Hilbert space and the uh, vector such that um, first this uh, this vector is a norming eigen vector of the square of zeta zero i mean if we regard zeta zero square as an operator in this Hilbert space via this representation, then zeta zero will be an, eigen, an eigenvalue, um, which uh, gives you the norm. And uh, second, uh, This vector will be orthogonal to the subalgebra acting on this vector. If you assume these two properties, it is a, an easy exercise to show that uh, such an element is minimal. You, you do easy computations in the Hilbert space, and uh, you don't lose information because of this fact. The, this representation, the presentation may have a kernel; it need, need not be uh, injective, but uh, it works fine for this element because of this property. And. Uh, So, what about, uh, I, I said that one does not expect uh, uniqueness, but how about existence? Well, we know this one result, uh, this 
only this general situation in which we, want, we can guarantee existence, which is when the subalgebra is a von Neumann algebra. In every class in the quotient, there exists minimal elements. Uh, the argument is uh, is quite straightforward, and uh, it's based on the fact that if you are, if the algebra, if the subalgebra is a von Neumann algebra, you are uh, trying to compute the distance from an element to a set which is closed in the weaker topology. Uh, the, for instance, the, the <coughs> this uh, <coughs> the weak topology which I described above. And it's a classical theorem that the unit ball of, uh, of for instance, of the <coughs> of uh, von Neumann algebra in such operator, in such a topology is uh, compact. So it is a compactness argument. You will find uh, um, an, an element, uh, a best approximant, uh, using a compactness argument. in the weak topology. Of course, this comprises all finite dimensional examples. Oh, let me talk now about the some of the examples. As I mentioned before, I, I won't uh, use in, uh, uh, any fancy sister algebras, just uh, full operator algebras. For instance, uh, H equal n dimensional Hilbert space, so that uh, we can take the algebra to be all n by n matrices. And uh, as a subalgebra, we can consider diagonal matrices. This quotient will give you the, the flag manifold. And uh, 
but uh, the problem of, uh, of course, in this case, uh, minimal matrices exist, but uh, the description of minimal matrices is uh, un, to us unexpected, unexpectedly hard problem. I mean, uh, uh, the, the, if n is equals two, this is uh, trivial. Uh, the problem is this: you have a mat matrix, an n by m matrix, and uh, you can regard this problem as this: you you want to you have a symmetric matrix, and you have a void. You have to fill the diagonal places in order that the norm stays as small as possible. The, the, the problem is just this one in this case. Um, except in the case when n equals 2, where the best answer is to put zeros in the diagonal, in, for n equals 3, this is, a, is a not known. Which, if you are given a matrix, which is the best way to complete it, the diagonal in order, in order that the, the norm stays as small as possible. We have a parameterizations of solutions, we have uh, characterizations, but if you give me a, a three by three matrices, matrix and ask me uh, which is the best diagonal that you can put in order to minimize the norm, I don't know. And uh, of course, uh, I invite you to think about this if you come up with new ideas. Um, um, <clears throat> there are, of course, then you have uh, related uh, examples. You can take, uh, instead of uh, matrices, you can take block matrices. Or, um, instead of uh, numbers, you, put, you can put matrices of given sizes or operators in Hilbert space, and, but the problem will become only harder. Uh, again, uh, you, have, you will have a, a existence because in these cases, uh, even if you put matrices or you put operators in the, in the entries, you will have uh, the, that the subalgebra is uh, for Neumann algebra. Also, you can uh, uh, generalize by taking so, sorry, block matrices. Uh, if you take an equal to two and block uh, on matrices of, uh, say, dimension k, you have uh, on k and n minus k, you have the k Grassmannian of uh, <coughs> of c to the n. Uh, another uh, way to be to generalize this example is to consider infinite matrices. And uh, of course, uh, and sometimes when you pass to infinite dimensions, the problems be problems of this type become easier, but not in this case. Also, for infinite matrices, we don't know uh, we, how to describe precisely the best approximants to the diagonal matrices. Uh, another example is um, to consider uh, to have a H decomposed as a direct sum of two subspaces so that uh, again take A equal to B of H which uh, in view of uh, this decomposition um, operators here can be regarded as two by two matrices in terms of this decomposition. And uh, this subalgebra here 
uh, you can take uh, matrices which uh, are zero everywhere except on the two two corner. So here you have a any operator in. Uh, in this case, <coughs> uh, your problem becomes the, fo becomes the following. You have a, a self-adjoint. Let's say we can self-adjoint incomplete matrix. And you want uh, to complete the two, two entry in order that the, the norm stays as small as possible. It turns out that this problem uh, was solved in, by Crane. In, it, it can be rephrased as the so-called Crane's and Mark Crane's extension problem. Uh, which is the following. You have a, a self ad, uh, an operator, uh, say, Sito prime from H0 to H, and which obvious this um, symmetry relation uh, with the <coughs> restricted uh, here. With, with, when you restrict the vectors here, it is uh, symmetric. And you want to extend it to the whole H and with minimal norm. Uh, Crane gave an, a solution on, to this problem in 1944. And he showed that. Uh, there is, there, there is a minimal solution and a maximal solution, and there is a whole interval, operator interval of solutions, so non-unique. So in, uh, in this case, um, you have existence and, of course, non-uniqueness. No. Right. Yes. I don't know what uh, does so that means, but. Uh, you, you want to use the metric in the unitary group to use it? Yes, right. Um, later in the 80s, Chandra Davis and, 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 and others gave even um, parameterizations of solutions of this problem. And um, one consequence of their formulas is that uh, you can consider a third example, which is uh, restrict to the, the algebra to be the compact operators. Um, 
compact operators. Uh, here we are dealing with uh, self-adjoint compact operators. So they, they are easier to describe. They are operators which are diagonal with respect to a orthonormal basis with uh, diagonal entries, uh, a sequence com uh, which uh, converges to zero. And uh, um, what uh, Davis showed that is that if you start with zeta compact, if your uh, element is compact, then you can, there are minimal compact Does zero. I mean, the, the argument using the, the, I mean, the compactness, the, the argument using the, the subalgebra is for Neumann algebra, using the weak compactness of the unit ball, uh, won't guarantee you, won't guarantee you this uh, property because uh, it won't. Uh, if you use the argument with a, a compact uh, operator, it will lose, uh, and uh, the thing is, uh, the if you use a, as a subalgebra, I mean this one. This is not a von Neumann algebra, so that's uh, so you may have a, a best approximant, but you won't have it compact here. But using uh, Davis solutions, uh, you find uh, compact, uh, uh, best approximants. And so, um, I come to my last example, which uh, is also involves uh, compact operators. But uh, here <coughs> we take as a subalgebra uh, um, let's call it the infinite, that is uh, That is diagonal. Compact. I mean, uh, the, the, the bigger algebra, the self adjoint elements of the bigger algebra will be operators which are diagonal which with respect to some orthonormal basis, and these are diagonal with respect to a fixed basis. So the same question is here if uh, if there exists for any given compact self-adjoint operator a diagonal a best approximation to the <coughs> diagonal compact operators and the answer is uh, that no. Uh, there is a counterexample by Varela, which I mentioned, and the student of him, Botassi. They found uh, one parameter family of uh, even uh, not only compact but uh, Hilbert Schmidt matrices, which uh, do not admit the uh, best approximant onto the diagonal compact operators. So, you won't have uh, uh, minimal elements for this quotient. This is the first example that, that was found in this problem, and this uh, was published last year.
So <coughs> y are minimal elements interesting to the geometry. Of, uh, of this quotient. Well, that will be the, that will be the subject of uh, my colleague Lazaro Rex talk. So I I'll stop here. heard something of the Abelian case earlier this morning. Uh, the problem that you address has uh, some point of contact with. You, you solved the problem of uh, finding the best approximant to... Uh, <laughs> we didn't treat the Abelian case. Um, that is uh, the answer. Any more questions? Since in the Abelian case, you're, you're always in, a, in an algebra of functions over a, a space, and then that's, uh, and you were looking at the quotient in, uh, but, uh, but it's a very special quotient, right? Because you were looking at, uh, at the continuous functions modulo constants, and you, you had the best approximants in that case. I mean, right. you, you yeah. were looking at the yes, quotient uh, metric. Your, your subalgebra would be the real numbers, and uh, the big algebra would be the continuous functions on a compact. House of space. B would be the reals. Just the reals. The complex the numbers. numbers. Yes. No, not no, no, no. Just, just one case. Just yeah. no. That that case is uh, it was very interesting, and it's the first Abelian case that I've heard of. Okay. Yeah. No. No. Any more questions? Uh, do you think it's possible to consider pairs? Do you think it's possible to consider pairs AB for which you find a solution and to show that this set is uh, closed under some operations? Uh, that would be interesting. Or oh, I don't know. Another question? Comments, remarks? Let's thank the first speaker here. Yeah. Okay.